How many times have you started to do really well and then stopped? And then started to do really well and then stopped? Too many times? Today we're gonna to be talking about how you as a human are built to keep moving. One of the things that I noticed with a lot of people is they don't understand the power of momentum, the power of moving into the direction of what it is that you want. And uh, I wanna tell you a story about a friend of mine. A friend of mine went down and he lived with a native Brazilian tribe for 40 days. And when I say native Brazilian, I don't mean that they were just like Brazilians that happened to live down in Brazil. What I mean is he actually went into the jungle inside of Brazil and lived with them for 40 days inside of a teepee. He had to sleep with a machete because before they have had jaguars walk in in the middle of the night and attack people. Uh, wherever he is in the middle of nowhere, he had to walk around with a machete. And um, he told me something really interesting. And, and they were, he was telling me about how they used to hunt for anacondas and, and just what their life was like and how it's kind of like going back 50 or 100,000 years. And one of the things that was really interesting and, and we were talking about fears that they have and fears that he had while he was down there. And because of the fact that when he was walking around, he had to be so conscious of where he was in his surroundings that he said it was really interesting. I had all of my primal fears, but none of my intellectual fears. And what do I mean by primal fears versus intellectual fears? Primal fears, you might die. Something might come out of the bush. There might be a jaguar, there might be an anaconda, there might be something that could attack you. That's a primal fear, like a death is attached to that primal fear. An intellectual fear is like, is Sally in accounting judging me? Do I have enough likes on my Facebook? Will I get rejected? Those are intellectual fears. They're not real fears. And he said what was interesting is it was the happiest that he's ever been. And when he came back to America, he said there was a little bit of depression that came with it because he went from living the way that he thought that humans were made to live, like that's what, what is normal. And he felt so good because there was so much purpose in every single thing that he did. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And when he came back to America, it all just kind of seemed hollow to him. And he actually slept outside in a tent for months because he just felt like he just missed that life. And he was starting to go into a little depression. And the one thing that he said to me, and he looked me dead in the eyes and he said, Rob, do you want to know the craziest part about being down there? I was like, yeah. And he looks me dead in the eyes and he says, there is no depression down there. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, not one hint of depression does anybody have down there. And the reason why was because every moment of their life was working towards some purpose. And I'll give you an example. So, you know, they were always working towards something. They always had something that they could be doing. And it's kind of like Tony Robbins says, progress equals happiness. And he was like, they were the happiest people I've ever seen. You know, the women, they always had something to do. They would take care of the kids. They would, you know, wash the clothes. They would create clothes for people. Uh, they would, you know, go out and pick the berries. And they always had something to be doing. And they were always laughing as they were doing this because they were trying to progress and try to get something done all day long. The men, they'd wake up before the sun would rise and they'd go out hunting all day long. And they would, you know, go out with the machete into the middle of the jungle and just try to find something that they could hunt. And they would come back with, you know, a 15 or 20 foot long anaconda. And the, the entire tribe would celebrate with them. And it was this amazing thing where they brought back the anaconda and just everybody would celebrate. And then they would have this big, massive feast and everyone was laughing and cracking jokes. And then they would dance all night and they would celebrate how everybody was fed and they would celebrate how mother nature was able to feed this tribe but what was happening is they were so happy because they always had something that they were working towards they always were leaning towards doing something every single day and they had momentum on their side for everything they would do but they had so much fun doing it and they felt so alive and he was like I've never felt so alive but he always had a sense of purpose and that was the difference from being here when he came back to America. He runs a, a $15 million a year company. And he had more sense of purpose down there, going out and waking up in the morning and working with the tribe and helping everybody and having this hunt that they had to go on. He had more purpose down there, he felt, than he did running his $15 million a year company. And it goes back to what I was telling you, you know, in the past couple episodes, which is action creates more action. Usually it's really hard to not take, it's really hard to take action when you haven't been taking action. 
Like when you're stagnant, when you're laying on the couch, when you're laying in bed, when you're sitting on the floor, whatever it is, and you're not actually taking action is usually when you start to feel, oh, I don't feel good. I don't, I kind of feel depressed. I have anxious thoughts. I don't, I'm not very happy. I'm sad. It's usually when you're not taking action because I really truly believe that humans were meant to move. Like we're meant to be in the move for some sort of purpose. And I don't mean purposes in changing the, the, the world because this tribe wasn't changing the world, but they were changing every single day for their community. They, were, they had a sense of purpose that they were all working towards. Humans were not meant to be inactive. Humans were meant to move, to get up, to do things, to keep going. But nowadays we have really comfortable couches. We have really comfortable chairs. We have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have computers. We have really, you know, crazy games that we could play on crazy systems. And we have, you know, all of the information at our fingertips. We can just sit there and lay on the ground and be stagnant and watch YouTube and learn about neuroplasticity or whatever it is that we want to learn. But our bodies aren't physically moving, which means that we're not progressing towards the, the future that we truly want. And it really brings up the power of momentum. I was talking with one of my team members today. We have about 20 people that are on my team. Now I was talking with one of my team members about the power of momentum, right? He's had a really great past couple days, you know, past four days or so. He's had a lot of sales doing the best he's ever done. And I said, hey, listen to me, don't get a case of the I deserve it's. You have so much momentum on your side. You have to keep that momentum going. You're already moving. You've already got the action on your side. It's easier to keep taking action. But if you stop, if you get a case of the I deserve it, it's gonna be really damn hard to get right back to where you are right now. So the best thing that you can do is to keep this momentum going. And I said, it's kind of like if you've ever pushed a car. When you first start pushing a car, it's really hard to get that car moving. Like it takes a lot of effort to get that car moving when you're pushing it. But then it starts moving a little bit and it starts moving a little bit. And then it's going a couple miles an hour. It might be going three or four miles an hour. And once it's moving, it's super easy to push a car. But when it's not moving, it gets really freaking hard. And that's how a lot of people live their lives. Lots of people, they get the car rolling and then they get a case of the I deserve it. And then the car starts to slow down again. And now what do they have to do? They have to try to push and physically force for something to happen. And then they get a case of the I deserve it because it's starting to move again. And then the car slows down and now they've got to push. And so it's pushing and then stopping and then pushing and then stopping and then pushing and then stopping. And they're like, man, I feel like I'm always starting at zero. I feel like I'm always spinning my wheels. Yeah, no sh because you're doing the same thing over and over again. You're not keeping the momentum going. You're not keeping yourself moving, moving in a forward progress. You're not just continuing to have purpose each and every day towards that future, whatever is the future is that you're trying to build. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you. And so you've got to think of it that way. It's, you know, I've worked with a lot of salespeople. I've trained thousands of salespeople. One of the things that I see with a lot of salespeople is the case of the I deserve it. This is a perfect example. Whether you're in sales or not in sales, you'll get this because you've probably been in some sort of situation like this. They'll have a really great sales week. And then what happens? They take their foot off the gas and they start to slow down. Why? Because they get a case of the I deserve it. Oh my God, I did so well last week. I deserve to sleep in this week. I did so many calls last week. I deserve to do less this week. And what happens is they go from doing really well and then they go back into their comfort zone and they do really well and then they go back into their comfort zone. Instead of pushing every single week to break out of their comfort zone and find a new level for themselves. So they get a case of the I deserve it. Oh man, I just got a really big paycheck. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna chill for a little while. Because why? Because I get a good paycheck. How are you ever gonna make more money if you don't continue to keep pushing yourself? This doesn't just happen in sales too. This happens in everything. This happens in weight loss. How often do you see someone lose a ton of weight? Six months down the road, you see them, they're right back to the size that, the size that they were. You know, they lose 30 pounds. They look incredible. And then what happens? They get a case of the I deserve it. Oh yeah, I lost 30 pounds. I deserve to have ice cream today. Oh yeah, I lost 30 pounds. I deserve to, you know, go off my diet. I deserve, uh, you know, I, I lost 30 pounds. I deserve to, you know, not do meal prep this week. And it's not like one massive decision that completely makes them go back to where they were. It's a bunch of little teeny tiny decisions that slow down the momentum that they're in. How often do you see someone that, that loses a ton of weight and then they gain it all back? How often do you see someone that wins the lottery and wins a ton of money? 
and then a few years later, they're back to where they were. How often do you see a big spike in your own bank account? And then you get a case of the I deserve it's. And it's not like you go out and, you know, you might get a thousand dollar bonus or something like that. Two thousand dollar bonus for Christmas, whatever it is. And you might be like, man, this is incredible. And it's not like you go out and you buy a brand new car, hopefully, but it's like you do a bunch of little teeny tiny things. You go out a couple extra times this week. You go buy a couple new shirts. You go buy a couple new pairs of jeans. Ooh, new shoes just came in. I'm going to go ahead and get some, you know, new Jordans just dropped. I'm going to go ahead and get those. And even though you just got a big thousand, two thousand dollar bonus, Two months down the road, where are you? Back to where you were before. Because you got a case of the I deserve it's. Oh, I got extra money in my account. I deserve to go shopping. Oh, I've lost 50 pounds. I deserve to eat a little bit more. Oh, I just had a great sales week. I, just, I deserve to, to sleep in this week. No, it's about finding the momentum, having the momentum on your side, and then continuing to push through it. It's about realizing that if you continue to keep doing this over and over again, to keep having to restart, you're going to maintain the current life that you're at. And if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably listening because you don't want to maintain. You do know you have more potential. You do know that you have more inside of you to give. And so you're trying to push past it. And so what do you do? You have to have that constant progression, constant purpose that you're working towards every single day. Right, The same way that they woke up every single morning down in Brazil and they had something that they were working towards. Whether it was by themselves or whether it was collectively everybody together, there was some sort of mission. Even if it was just a simple mission, take care of the kids today, you know, sew some clothes. Or if you know, all of us guys are gonna go out on a hunt. It's not life changing, it's not world changing, but it's something that they're working towards. And so many people are out there and like, man, I don't have a purpose in life. I need to figure out how to change the world. I need to make a million dollars. No, what if you just have a simple purpose each and every day, something that you're working towards? All too often people have some sort of purpose and they get really excited. I mean, how many people out there listening to me right now have had this happen before? You get really excited to go towards your goal and you have like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm going to go on this weight loss challenge, this 60 day weight loss challenge. And I'm going to push myself. And you're like, all right, day number one, you're cranking through. You're eating all of the perfect stuff. You're doing all of the workouts. You're so excited about it. Day number two. All right, I'm going to do it. I'm, I'm not as excited as I was yesterday, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I got 60 days. Of this. I'm going to push myself. I'm going to eat really healthy. I'm going to get my workout in. Day number three. Well, uh, I, um, I'm not as excited, but I'm going to figure out a way to do it. Day number four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What happens? Day ten, you're already off. You're already eating bonbons, sitting on the couch again, not doing what you need to. You know, negotiating with your mind on why you should probably skip this workout today and do it tomorrow. Right? We all get excited in the beginning, and then it falls off. Why? Because we have to start the momentum. But here's the secret. Once the momentum gets going, just like a car, you have to continue to push and continue to push and continue to push. And you have to understand that the people who are the most successful in the world, not just money, not just build the biggest businesses, but the happiest and you know, have the most passion in life, whatever it is, is when they get to a certain level, they don't stop. They say, I wonder what's next. I wonder what the next version of me looks like. I wonder how I can expand myself to do even better. I wonder how I can expand my purpose to impact even more people's lives. I wonder how I can expand every facet of what I do. And what do they do? They push themselves a little bit more and they push themselves a little bit more. Can I get this car to roll faster? Can I get this car to roll even faster? Not, oh man, the car's moving. All right, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and take a nap. Because if you do that, guess what's gonna happen? The car's gonna slow back down and then you gotta start over again. How many times have you started to do really well and then stopped? And then started to do really well and then stopped? And then started to do really well and then stopped? Too many times? If you knew how many people did this over and over and over again, if you do this, you're not odd, you're normal. Almost everybody does this, but there's a select few people that don't allow the I deserve us to pop in their head and say, yes, but what's next for me? What's next for me? And I don't mean like how much more money I can make. Like making money is just a hollow goal. But like what's next for me? I'm trying to progress me as a human, this soul. I'm trying to literally make it better in everything that I do. If I'm trying to progress my soul, I'm not going to get a case of the I deserve it. I'm going to say, what's next for this? How many more people can I impact? How many more lives can I impact? How much better can I make this? How many more episodes can I do? Whatever it is for you, it might be a little bit different than it is for me. But how can you have the mentality of, I will not stop. Once I get that momentum on my side, I'm gonna ride the momentum and get it to be even better. 
It's just like if you take a, you know, a, I always say it, it's, it's really, really easy to stop a bowling ball. If you go to the very, very top, you take a 15 pound bowling ball, you take, uh, uh, put it on the top of a hill and you let go of it. It's easy to stop it at about 10 feet because it's not going too fast to that point. But if you try to stop a really heavy bowling ball that's going full speed down a hill at the bottom of the hill, it's really freaking hard to stop it. And that's what you're trying to get yourself to be. You're just like the momentum is on your side. The momentum is on your side in your business, in your life, in your relationship, in your finances, in your career, in everything that you do. And so the question I have for you is where are you lacking momentum in your life? How many times have you started something and then given up because you didn't have the momentum? And then what can you do to focus on making sure that every single thing that you do, you try to push yourself a little bit past what you think is possible. And when you notice that you got the momentum, you notice you're doing better. You notice that you got a little bit more money. You notice that you're losing a little bit more weight. You notice that you're working out a little bit more. You notice that you're, you know, you're eating better than ever before. There's another level. There's always another level for you. What does that level look like? And if you could be in constant search for what the next level of you is every single day, you're going to wake up in a couple of years and there's going to be a brand new version of yourself that you never even thought was possible. Find your purpose, work towards your purpose and be working towards it every single day. Get the momentum on your side and always have something that you're working towards. That is is what makes you excited. That is where your purpose comes from. And that is what makes it easy to work really hard is when you have something that you're working towards every single day. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Who are you and who do you want to become? Is it the person that you've always been? Is that who you are? Or do you want to step into a new version of yourself? You can make that decision right now.